Hello and welcome back to Ginge and C. Thank you for joining for another shark talk. Today we're going to be covering a really interesting topic, shark teeth. So let's dive straight in. So let's start with a feature of all sharks, which is the fact that they lose and replace their teeth throughout their life cycle. Now, the speed will change according to the eating habits of the shark and the shape and size of the teeth. However, it's known that some sharks will get through over 35,000 teeth in their lifespan. Now, sharks have multiple rows of teeth in their mouth at any one time, and each one of these rows is on their own sort of little conveyor belt, where as they lose one tooth, that row of teeth on its own, independent from the other teeth, will actually move forward and move the next tooth into position to replace the lost tooth. And this can actually happen in as short as 24 hours for some sharks. And sharks are known to have at least five or six sets of teeth in their mouth at any one point with the teeth moving forward into position as they lose their front main teeth. So shark's teeth are actually embedded in a thin layer of cartilage, which is above the jawbone. So they are not embedded into the jaw like ours are. In this video, as this ragged tooth shark swims past, you can see the number of teeth it has in its mouth, and you can see the rows of teeth ready to move into position if it was to lose any of these front current teeth. Shark teeth are actually unique to each species of shark, and they actually vary according to where in the jaw and on which jaw they are placed. These variations differ according to the diet of the shark species. So actually, we can tell a lot about the food source of the shark by looking at its teeth. So there are four different types of shark tooth shape. However, lots of different shark teeth do actually fall in between some of these main definitions of shark tooth shapes. The first one is the dense, flattened shark tooth, also known as tooth plates. And this is very common for bottom dwelling sharks such as the Port Jackson shark and nurse sharks and zebra sharks and this is because their main food source is crustaceans or other small shelled organisms around the seabed such as biv bivalves and mollusks. These tooth plates are perfectly designed for crushing these hard shells of crustacean and mollusks and you can see here in this photo these flattened tooth plates in the zebra shark's mouth you can see there's no pointed or sharp teeth, it is all just really hardened, dense tooth plates that are ideal for crushing. The next tooth type is needle-like teeth, and this is actually the first tooth structure in the first shark. So the Cladoslashi, our very first defined shark species 420 million years ago, had needle-like teeth, and these teeth are perfect for catching small to medium-sized fish, as they act like a fork, and they can just pierce the, this sort of slippery and small body of a fish, and then they can pull it into their mouth and swallow it whole. So modern sharks that generally have this tooth structure are the hammerhead sharks and black tip sharks and also, and ragged tooth sharks are very well known for this tooth structure and obviously are actually named after their tooth style. So the next tooth type is the triangular serrated teeth. And these are designed like knives and perfect for tearing up prey. So this is obviously designed for animals that eat larger food sources so that they can tear it up into smaller bite-sized pieces. So this is ideal for sharks such as the great white shark where their prey source is seals and they need to rip the seal up before they can eat it. Now the last type of tooth is the non-functional teeth. I and mean, this is common in plankton feeders such as whale sharks and basking sharks. And these teeth don't actually serve a purpose for feeding as these sharks swim along with their mouth wide open and they filter feed allowing water in through their mouth and out through their gills catching small microscopic animals like plankton so they don't actually need these teeth for feeding however it's thought they may have a purpose for breeding as sharks are regularly known to clamp their teeth onto the female shark during mating now this isn't known if this is used for sharks such as the whale shark and the bison shark because this has actually never been seen, but it's possibly a function of their teeth. And interestingly, the whale shark, even though it doesn't use its teeth for feeding, actually is known to have over 3,000 teeth in its mouth at any one point. And they are small hook-like teeth. And this is actually where it gets its Latin name, Rincidon typus, actually means rasp tooth. So it's actually named 
after its teeth, even though the vast majority of people probably don't even realize that the whale shark has teeth in the first place. So shark teeth are particularly important in historical shark records due to the fact that the shark teeth are generally the only surviving part of the shark over long periods of time. This is due to the fact that the cartilage skeletons of the sharks generally dissolve relatively rapidly in the ocean, where the hard calcium phosphate material of the teeth allows them to actually fossilize and therefore survive and last in the sediment for millions of years for us to use as fossil records. Now there is an awful lot of shark teeth in the oceans and in sediment today. If you think that sharks have been around for over 400 million years and just one shark can create 30,000 teeth, this equates to a lot of shark teeth either in the ocean or in sediment around the world today. And due to this, shark teeth products such as jewelry like necklace and earrings are becoming very popular. And the vast majority of the time, these are not damaging and are fine to buy, but there's a few things you should know. The main thing you should be aware of is to make sure that the shark teeth products you're buying, whether it's earrings or necklace, are fossilized shark teeth. So you'll know this by the color. So fossilized shark teeth are usually black or dark brown or dark gray. This proves this shark was not actively killed for its products, whether it was its teeth or its fins. This shark died thousands, maybe millions of years ago, of natural causes, and therefore we can use those teeth to make jewelry. So the thing you should watch out for is any shark products that have white teeth like this. Okay, so if the tooth is still very white, that means that that tooth is quite new and that shark may well have been killed for its shark products, whether it's for finning or for its oil or directly for its teeth. We don't want to encourage any sharks to be killed for their products. Therefore, we should not buy any products where the shark teeth are white. Obviously, if you do find your own shark teeth on a dive or elsewhere and they are white, they may well have just fallen out of a shark's mouth as we know they lose them regularly and then drifted down into the sediment. And that is fine, obviously, to pick them up and you can use them and create jewelry out of them. But remember, please do not buy any jewelry that has white teeth as you do not know the source of that tooth. And it may well be that that shark has been killed for shark products, including that tooth that you're about to buy. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you really enjoyed today's talk on shark teeth. If you got some value out of this video, then please do give it a like on the button below. And don't forget to subscribe to continue learning more about sharks and marine conservation. Thank you for joining and I'll see you in the next one.